it, it's really simple, right? Like Sid used to drop the keys, right? Yeah. The idea that it works every time because that's what it does. And, uh, you know, we didn't have any context for why getting adjusted helped, right, in our household. I didn't grow up with the philosophy. I was vaccinated as a kid. Um, you know, we ate junk food and fast food and all of that stuff. So I didn't like grow up with that idea, but it was just in our household, you get adjusted. Yeah. And that was it. And chiropractic was enough to completely reset my development uh, uh, as, as a healthy child and growing up into adulthood. And I think that's what's so important. We talk often about like this idea of a chiropractic lifestyle, just correcting a subluxation and allowing a child to express that innate intelligence fully without interference is a profound impact on their life, even if there's no other changes made. Well, welcome everybody, Dr. Ron Oberstein, president of Life Chiropractic College West, and I am joined by my host, co-host, my wife, the indomitable Dr. Mary Oberstein. Hi, Mary. Hi. Great to see you. And uh, even though I just saw you about, what, 25 minutes ago, uh, but it's always good to see you. And I also, we have as a guest on our Life by Life West edition today, uh, a young chiropractor, I can say young uh, chiropractor, uh, coming at us uh, from West Palm Beach, Dr. Ian Stolman. Welcome, Dr. Ian. Doctors, thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's exciting. I, I, I'm going to share with the audience what you're actually doing for the college, and it's so cool. But um, but let me just tell our audience a little bit about Dr. Ian. Dr. Ian uh, graduated in 2011 from Life University, uh, grew up in Florida. He's down in West Palm Beach practicing, uh, started practice right away on his own. Uh, worked in a birthing center, actually built his practice in a birthing center. He's into pediatrics, which you'll find out about. Uh, after and after eight years, moved into uh, his own office, um, sees a, a, a just a ton of, of peds. Uh, 95% of his practice are under one year of age. New patients are under one year of age. So that pretty much speaks for itself. Super, super busy. Uh, diplomat uh, in pediatrics with the ICPA, also teaches for the ICPA. And this doctor is on the move and uh, doing wonderful things. And, you know, this is a future leader uh, that, that, that Dr. Mary and I see in our profession. And we're just thrilled to have him on the show. So, Ian, I hope that was a good enough introduction. Uh, the other thing I didn't share was you're a Cairo kid. So, uh, he's, you know, and we'll get into that story. It's a pretty interesting story, but um, it's great to have you. So welcome from, uh, from hopefully it's cooling off West Palm Beach these days, but, uh, but well, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what cool weather means. That doesn't, that doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> I totally get it. I totally get it. Hey, well, let's let's start. Let's let's move. I, I, there's so much we want to cover. And, and I know we got just you know, a little bit of time. Um, Tell us about your journey. You know, like, how did you get into chiropractic? I think that's a big thing. Be, most people assume that, oh, you're a chiropractic kid. You know, your dad's a chiropractor. Of course, you know, kind of thing. Share, share your journey with us. So, uh, you know, I'm a I'm second generation chiropractor, but I don't have the typical second generation chiropractor story. My dad went to NYCC because chiropractic had cured or solved his migraine issue that he had his whole life. And he very much graduated and went into practice to like a kind of a natural orthopedics model. Uh, most of this practice was focused uh, aches and pains, did tremendous work helping a ton of people. Along the way, started to see all of these like really fascinating responses to chiropractic and all of the quote unquote miracles, but didn't really have the context to understand what it was. Uh, fortunately, he got me adjusted from an early age, but it wasn't until about 20 years into practice when I was a freshman in college at University of Florida going through all my pre-med requirements when my dad went to Total Solution with, uh, you know, CLA, got a substation, and he started learning about the relationship between the nervous system and subluxation and what happens when you actually deliver an adjustment. And he came back so fired up and lit up about chiropractic for the first time in my life. 
uh, I was looking, I was like, what is all this? And he shared with me that, you know, big idea, right? What chiropractic really can be. And I said, that's what I want to do. Uh, and he recommended at the time, uh, it was the, probably the, the most philosophically based school close to us in South Florida. Uh, and so I ended up at uh, Life University in uh, Atlanta. Wow. And you were on a, I, go. Oh, I have a quick question. You said you were pre-med. You were taking pre-med? Yeah. So what were you, what, what path were you on at that time? I was going to be an orthopedic surgeon. Um, I had knee issues growing up, uh, you know, from wrestling and playing baseball as a catcher for years. Oh. And uh, my dad brought me to some of his friends for some work. And I sat there and I said, wow, look at this. It's a license to print money. That sounds like a wonderful career. So I was planning like to be an orthopedic surgeon. That was That was my dream. And when my dad came home and started talking about the relationship between the spine and the nervous system and what happens with subluxation and what happens in the body when you deliver an adjustment, all of a sudden it started clicking like, oh, this is why when I grew up, I was never sick. This is why I, you know, uh, had to beg my parents for days off because I was jealous when my friends got sick days at school. I was like, oh, this makes more sense based on what I know from growing up uh, compared to what I was learning in my pre-med classes. So I said, this is what I want to do. I want to become a chiropractor. Right. And I was going to ask the same exact question. But the, the interesting thing is that, you know, a lot of chiropractic kids grow up, you know, what, like like your children when you have I don't know if you have children or not but when you do have you have children too, yeah yeah okay good so you know they grow up and they're going to be kind of endowed in the philosophy and understand that there's an innate intelligence mm -hmm. of the body and that the body is a self healing organism you know and that that kind of stuff right and they'll kind of grow up like that a little different yeah. you know than their than their counterparts but you still had the the beautiful thing that I love that that I pulled out of what you said or one of the things is that you still had the the you know, I don't want to say the effects, but I'll say BJ Palmer used that word, but the effects of chiropractic care, because, you know, you were never sick and your body, your immune system was strong and, you know, you were different than the other kids and all that kind of stuff. But yet without that other piece around it, almost like you're, you're in a Petri dish showing that chiropractic is like, you know, really works without even understanding the why behind it, you know, and it's, yeah, I, it, 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 it's really simple, right? Like Sid used to drop the keys, right? Yeah. The idea that it works every time because that's what it does. And, uh, you know, we didn't have any context for why getting adjusted helped, right, in our household. I didn't grow up with the philosophy. I was vaccinated as a kid. Um, you know, we ate junk food and fast food and all of that stuff. So I didn't like grow up with that idea, but it was just in our household, you get adjusted. Yeah. And that was it. And chiropractic was enough to completely reset my development uh, uh, as, as a healthy child and growing up into adulthood. And I think that's what's so important. We talk often about like this idea of a chiropractic lifestyle, just correcting a subluxation and allowing a child to express that innate intelligence fully without interference is a profound impact on their life, even if there's no other changes made. Right. So I just yeah. to me, I just feel like I'm an example of that growing up. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's, such a, it's such a great story. But it's so, like, Ron, like you said, it's so unique because we've had a lot of Cairo kids and it's it's your story is really unique. And it's I think it's so cool. It really speaks to like the power of chiropractic in a kind of a different way. So, yeah. And, and I also in some ways, I also think that growing up well adjusted there there was almost this innate connection to the philosophy of chiropractic even though i didn't have like it within my educated consciousness yeah. right there was this like innate connection where i was like oh as soon as i heard it i was like that's it that's why right that's what i need to do because that's what i've been living my whole life so yeah. it's almost like you've been feeling you've been feeling the innate connection but you just didn't know what that was until someone yeah. gave it the name and you went there it is that's right. The difference between innate and educated mind. Yeah. Wow. And, and listen, and mucho props, you know, to your father. You know, it, 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 I don't yeah. care if he went from one from from the left to the right or the right to the left. But being in practice for, you know, 20 something years and then changing, you know, completely how you practice. That's a big shift. 
And that, you know, and th- that's, that is such an, uh, such a wonderful thing for a human being. It doesn't matter what profession they're in to really be able to just say, Hey, look at my heart is telling me to move in this direction. And obviously he was educated, you know, um, you know, doing the work that he was doing before was, uh, was a, a lot of educated mind work, right. Um, you know, orthopedics and all that kind of stuff. And the shift into a subluxation model, you know, which is still very educated, very scientific, very rooted, you know, in, in research, but to make that shift is, is it's just a huge thing because people just get comfortable with what they're doing. So mucho, mucho props to him, you know, so cool, man. And, and- and, and, you know, we, we talk about like disconnecting from our ego, right? And and just being able to serve out of abundance. Um, I, I, I will never be able to repay the debt that my father gave, you know, in terms of exposing me to chiropractic, but creating the space for me to discover what was my passion. Um, for me to, to, to explore the profession and see what resonated with me, you know, often, um, you know, I have two boys, I know you both have children, uh, that have entered the field and it's sometimes hard for us as parents to separate our expectations or our wants and desires for our kids. And my dad always placed my focus first and said, here's, you know, he actually pawned me off on some of his friends. So I got to see like six or seven different styles of practice by just shadowing other doctors in the community because he wanted me to get a good picture of the entire profession. And that's still something that I recommend with students is go out and shadow every type of chiropractor you can see. You're going to learn things that you love. You're going to see things that you don't like, but either way that exposure is going to allow you to grow and become more of who you want to be authentically as a chiropractor. Yeah. Yeah. And Mary, I think you'd agree with us, you know, Ian, you don't know this yet just because, you know, you, you've got younger kids, but um, you've paid your father back in spades. I mean, you've you've overpaid him, you know, because the greatest the greatest accomplishment or the, that, that that a parent can watch their children. First of all, parents, we have, Mary and I have always talked about this, to be on the sidelines, to be in the stands, being a, an observer of our children's lives, not being in their lives, an observer of it has been the greatest gift that we could ever have. And didn't matter if they went left, right, center, backwards, you know, forward, backwards, it doesn't matter just to be able to watch that. So I trust that you've paid him back, you know, more than you could ever imagine. And you'll, you'll understand that a lot. You probably understand it educatedly, but you'll get it, you know, as your kids, as your kids move up in the world, but, and then peds, I mean, man, you know, you, you were going to be an orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I want to, I want to know when, when you, had this passion for peds was it in in school or was it after school first quarter um at life university we had uh i don't know what it was called life vision life quest life something right um it was uh like a weekend seminar and um i heard genie ohm and genie spoke with this passion of of what chiropractic offered humanity through taking care of pregnant patients, through uh, chiropractic available postpartum for for parents and baby and what the world could look like if everybody was well adjusted. And I said, this this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. I listened to Jeannie for like 45 minutes and I walked out of there and I knew exactly what the rest of my life was gonna look like. You could have dipped, dipped any further on my desk. I have a picture cemented of Jeannie right oh, here. I have that same picture. And, uh, yeah, that, that was from her, oh, from her. It was from her celebration of life. You know, Jeannie was on the board of Life West, and yeah. uh, we served on the board together. We became very close. We actually graduated the same the same month, the same year in 1981. Um, you know, she was at she was at Adio, and I was a you know, and I was at Life, but. Um, yeah, I mean, if to get dipped by anybody and to get touched, I couldn't think of a better person, quote unquote, to baptize you into pediatrics, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. And then Jeannie and, and Justin is truly just a gem. I mean, he is, he's stepped in and truly has just, just, um, you know, taking the organization to this level now, you know, that that only he could do on his level, you know, on, on what he does. So it's a it's beautiful, man. So, Justin is so, doing an incredible job. Incredible yeah. job. Yeah. So talk about your practice. I mean, you started off in this, you know, in a birthing center, which I think is phenomenal. I mean, w- w- unbelievable. You know, 
you know, I graduated and um, we moved down to South Florida. We got married and we opened a practice in about three months. Um, it was just chaos, right? Is your wife, wife a chiropractor? No, she uh, she kind of uh, public relations background kind of ran everything in terms of uh, back office, front desk, you know, husband, wife, open up a practice, figuring it all out together, living off of savings for a couple months type of thing. Um, I we opened up practice. And I knew, I mean, I was that kid in chiropractic school where I was drawing blueprints of my office. And of course, mine had like a birth center attached to it. And I had my logo copyright, copywritten in, you know, uh, 12th quarter. Like I knew exactly what I was going to do. Um, and we came to South Florida. And at the exact same time that I was opening up a practice, we were reaching out to all of these birth workers, trying to build relationships and connections and it just so happened that a midwife and a doula were opening up the first freestanding birth center in our county. And I somehow got like a, a chance to meet with them. And it became a, oh, well, we're looking for a chiropractor that really loves working with pregnancy. And I said, well, I don't just love working with pregnancy. I love attending births and adjusting moms in labor. Um, of course, at this point, I'd never actually done it, but I like the idea of it. I knew that it was important to do. Um, and they said, oh, cool. Well, why don't you come here and you can work Friday mornings for about three hours and, you know, you'll just bring a portable table and kind of shuffle back and forth between whatever birth room wasn't being used at the time. And uh, I remember this 25-year-old kid, uh, no kids himself. Uh, I grew a beard specifically so I could look older and people wouldn't ask me how old I was. Um, <laughs> of course, now my wife tells me that it's time I can grow the beard uh, or I can shave the beard. But uh, I basically sat there in this in the reception room, just introducing myself to all of these pregnant moms coming in and talking to them about chiropractic, right? Telling the story. And gradually that one day in the birth center turned or uh, three hours turned into a full day, turned into two full days. And all of a sudden I had two practices, my main location and then a birth center where um, I was kind of bouncing back and forth between two of them. But that opened so many doors, building the relationships with the birth workers, opened doors to great relationships with pediatricians, with OBGYNs, with hospital systems. And gradually my practice became more and more dominant in pregnancy and pediatrics. And like you said uh, on the intro, about 95% of my new patients are either pregnant or under the age of one. Uh, it's just the, the majority of our practice, we actually right now have a waiting list for any non-pregnant adult because we just don't have the capacity um, to, to take care of anybody. That's my little, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod, in case there are any students listening who want to associate in uh, South Florida. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that, that was my journey. That was 12 years ago. And it, honestly, it's just never slowed down because the more people learn about what chiropractic offers this population, the more people want it for themselves and the more chiropractors want to get into it also, which is just a beautiful thing. Right. Right. So, so where do you send, like, you know, if, if, um, if Mary came to you, if we were residents of South Florida, non-chiropractors, right? Mary's pregnant and came to you to be taken care of. Obviously, you take her as a new patient. If I wanted care, you know, Mary came up and said, you've got to see Dr. Ian. I mean, you, I, I understand what chiropractic is now. And I, you know, the whole family needs to get adjusted. Yeah. What do you do? Uh so a, a, as far as like, uh, you know, families that are already under care, they go to towards the top of the waiting list. That being said, we, we explain to them our practice is highly specialized in pregnancy and pediatric care. Uh, you know, if you're looking for, for care sooner, here's a list of local chiropractors that we trust that would be great resources for you. Uh, and, you know, I'm totally happy if they choose to go find another chiropractor or if even they end up saying hey we love this other chiropractor we're going to bring our whole family there you know what i mean that's kind of what abundance is right we're not trying to create all of these patients for ourselves we're trying to create patients for chiropractic yes. and i am way more committed and i've been this way from day one i'm way more committed to somebody receiving chiropractic for them and their family than me being the one to deliver chiropractic to them yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, brother, that's what we are right now, too. You know, we left right. practice to come up here, you know, just because we thought we saw it as a bigger mission, you know, yeah. to, you know, and, I, you know, I mean, Mary and I did the best we could. We've sent over 300, you know, for over. We stopped counting at 300 prospective or students to chiropractic school. Um, but we just saw this as like a, a, a just a bigger, much bigger game, you know, and it's yeah. really what it's about finding that bigger game. And it sounds like in, you know, in. 13 years, you've really created a, a beautiful game, you know, in South Florida, you know, yeah. with peds and, preg- and, and, and pregnancy. And, um, but what, tell me, is there, is it, is there a piece of your puzzle, you know, in the pediatric world, pregnancy and pediatric world that is really kind of like your jam, you know? Um, I, I think when we truly understand the deleterious effects that subluxation has on uh, a pregnant mom on the developing environment in which baby is being formed on how that influences the birth process and how birth epigenetically changes the future of that child. And then we understand how vital it is to make sure that children postpartum in the first couple of months are clear of subluxation, especially in the upper cervical spine. To me, it just becomes so absolutely important that we make chiropractic available to everybody in the world in that context. So for me, um, I want to make it so that chiropractic is a routine aspect of prenatal and pediatric care. Uh, Just as somebody goes to an OB or a midwife to get their prenatal visits, you also go to the chiropractor to get your adjustments. Just as when you check into the hospital, if you choose to have a hospital birth and they're doing, uh, uh, you know, their assessments, you're also laying down on the chiropractic table and getting clear of subluxation. Just as you bring your baby to get checked by the pediatrician, you swing by the chiropractor to make sure they're free of subluxation. To me, the, the excitement about chiropractic is in about making chiropractic uh, the routine for everybody, right? When BJ talked about the big idea, it wasn't about how you deliver an adjustment to one person and how that one person changes. It's what happens when entire family units are well-adjusted. What happens when communities are well-adjusted? What happens when countries and the world are well-adjusted? It fundamentally changes the way that we perceive and respond to the world around us. Um, You know, BJ used to talk about emptying the prisons and filling up the churches. And I never really believed he meant literally in terms of religion, but I always think he meant in terms of like consciousness, that when you're well adjusted, you experience and can respond to things differently. Now, if we can make that happen prenatally and in utero for babies, gosh, man, like we change the world in a generation. Yeah, absolutely. And and listen, that truthfully, what the, what you just described, if we took the word subluxation out and 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 of some of the chiropractic nomenclature is salutogenesis. You know, and, and it's, it's truly what, you know, what it is, you know, it's the creation of health and allowing people to have that coherence to be able to adapt and be and adapt to the best of their ability. Right. And and we're scientifically proven it now, you know, through HRV and other different aspects that we can able to show how the body can adapt much better when it's free of neurological interference. Um, it's it's so beautiful. I love your vision, man. It's your vision is my vision. <laughs> I love it. You know, listen, I love you for the you know, for loving the things that I love, right? <laughs> I do absolutely. Well, and, and my question too is like we've had that vision for a long time. A lot of especially chiropractors were into peds and pregnancy, right? It's like, how do we make that happen? Like, yeah. how do we like what is your thought on that? I'm not putting you on the on the spot, but like, like you're actually doing that. Cause I I, I do have a question. Have you been to a lot of births now? Oh, you- I mean, at this point, probably uh yeah, maybe a hundred or so. Maybe I, I've never. I I honestly stopped counting. Um, I attend births uh, as regularly as I can. Part of it depends on obviously if I get called out. Um, uh, you know, for me, I think one is we need to educate chiropractors on the value of the adjustment during labor. So that way more chiropractors will be willing to go out and do that. But it also requires that we reach out and build relationships with other people. I've developed relationships with doulas, childbirth educators, midwives, uh, labor and delivery nurses, OBGYNs, uh, hospital administration, because until we start to break down the barriers 
that that uncertainty, that unknown about what chiropractic can offer uh, in, in terms of the medical realm, it's it's we're always going to be limited by doing one spine at a time. But if we want to really change policy, we need to make sure that chiropractors can get access to, to OBGYNs and pediatricians and build those interprofessional relationships. So for me, what I first want to see is I really want to see more chiropractors building relationships with other uh, providers, build relationships with OBGYNs and pediatricians, and start to make them understand what we're looking at in terms of the subluxation. Because too often we communicate chiropractic in an allopathic manner. We try to talk about sciatica in pregnancy or breech baby or this or that. And what we need to be talking about is how subluxation affects the physiological state of pregnancy in pediatrics. And then explain to the pediatricians and the OBGYNs about how this is manifesting in their patients and why it's so important for these people to be under regular chiropractic care. So building those relationships, eventually tearing down those bylaws that restrict chiropractic access to hospitals, uh, you know, creating policy changes on a, on a uh, you know, state, international, interprofessional uh, level to make chiropractic uh, as a routine aspect of perinatal care. I think it's absolutely essential, but it starts with us being willing to go out and have those conversations with other professions. Too often, we like to sit back and serve our patients and then kind of play victim to the big, bad, you know, Wilkes versus AMA history around the world. We need to realize that that generation of professionals is kind of gone. Like, you know, they're they're not really the ones that are coming up and, and getting into positions of power. So we need to be willing to build relationships with this new generation of medical providers, explaining to them what subluxation correction has to offer uh, and and start to break down those barriers for everybody. Yeah. And I see it, man. I mean, I, I see you, I see, I see ICPA, you know, I see, we just had one of your instructors on a while back. He just spoke with the wave, Dr. Rubin from yeah. Atlanta, you know, talking, um, it, you know, these are people, even though, you know, Dr. Rubin's a little bit older, you know, that, but these are, when I say older, probably a little bit younger than me, but older than you, um, <laughs> you know, these are people who can go out and be able to talk, you know, talk the talk, because yeah. it's so important to be able to to communicate what we're doing on a scientific level, you know, communicate. It's not just philosophy. We have a strong science behind everything that we do. And our our philosophy just feeds that. Right. Um, it's just it's incredible. And I and I hear you, man. I, I, you got me. I'm, I'm enrolled because I always, I, I always laugh when people say, like, are you philosophically based or are you science based? And it's like. You know, just the, the premise of that question implies that people don't understand what science and philosophy are. Right. Um, and uh, what I find so fascinating is that the longer we're in chiropractic, the more we start to discover the science and we start to create the tools to be able to assess uh, the, the scientific understanding of the philosophy that was set, you know, 130 years ago. Right. Um, those things that Didi was talking about, about life founded on tone, those are the things that we're discovering through through science. And the more we learn, the more the subluxation correction model of chiropractic, right, the foundational tenets of our profession, the more that becomes validated. And it becomes so important that we make that known that this isn't just a, you know, hokey pokey relic of the past. This is what the science is showing us is that subluxation has a deleterious impact on the human condition and correcting that through the adjustment has a profound impact, not just in that person, but on everybody that person influences. Yeah. Oh, man, I tell you, and it starts from birth. It starts from the womb, you know? Yeah. Preconception, right? Because, you know, when we think about this, yeah, yeah. We, think, we think about this, right? Like the, the eggs that a mom, uh, you know, has that she eventually turns into a baby, were there in utero in what would have been the grandmother, right? So we have generations of, of epigenetic impact that's being passed down. So if somebody is subluxated in a chronic physiologically fight or flight state, that influences not just their 
child, but their child's child. Right. Um, and, and this is how this gets passed down and it gets, uh, uh, it, it makes it so essential that we start focusing on regular chiropractic care, uh, prenatally, even preconception, ideally. Uh, and I think that's the only way that's really going to have the full impact of what chiropractic has to offer. And, and I have to tell you that that's always been the predicament of our species, right? You know, yeah. not knowing or not knowing how to address. And that that's what creates a predicament, right? You know, n- not even seeing it until you finally get the outcome and you just see the health of of a of a society or a health of a of humanity just start to totally decrease. And and we do have a great answer, you know, to be able to plug into the model. Man, I love it. I love it. We're hitting that hour right now, that 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 time right now where we're kind of getting to the end of our show. And I think we could go on and on and on. But on, on our shows, we always ask on the Life by Life West, we always ask our guests two questions and just an innate response, whatever comes out of you. And it could change tomorrow, could totally be different in, in five minutes. Um, so we're going to start off. Mary, you, you asked the first one. I'll take the first one. OK, Ian, if you could go back that first day of first quarter at Life University, and you could stare yourself, your younger self in the face, what would you tell Ian? What advice would you give him? Uh, my, my instinct, I'm trying to put a positive spin on it. My instinct would be less being less judgmental. Uh, I tend to be very milita- uh, militant about what I believe. I know that I know that I know, and everybody else needs to know that. Um, communication wise, I feel like in the very beginning, when you're so excited and you just want to share with everybody, uh, it's really easy to push people away about what chiropractic offers, right? And so um, being more open, loving through it, and as as opposed to judgmental, I think that's something that awesome. I'm always struggling with based on on my level of certainty. So I would say be uh, be less judgmental, but in a positive way. No, oh, totally yeah. good. That's great. All right, I got the second question. Same question, but now you're speaking to Doctor Ian Stolman, who mm-hmm. just graduated today. What words of advice? would you give him based on what you know now looking back be patient um this is something that i'm absolutely uh passionate about sharing with students because we have this tendency within chiropractic to want to stand up on stage and bloviate about how amazing we are and how wonderful our hands are and how every person that i've touched transformed and and you know turning water to wine type of thing And yes, we get those stories in chiropractic, but too often uh, as a student, we think that every single patient is going to be a miracle story. And most of them, uh, as we adjust them, as we clear that subluxation, we need to give people time. We need to give their bodies time to heal from an unsubluxated place. And there were so many nights where I went home in early practice asking myself, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why aren't I getting those immediate results the way that I was told over and over and over in school? Um, Why isn't my practice exploding in these first couple of months? Like I was promised if I just did these things. But the more time I gave it, the more my patients were able to heal from an unsubluxated place, the more my practice was able to grow and the more I was able to create the life that I wanted and be able to change the lives that I wanted to change. That's beautiful. And I'm great great, man. You know, we've always said that the greatest miracles are the ones that you never see. You know, the person or the child who's about to, you know, turn to this direction physiologically, their body is ready to move over. And then they get an adjustment. They never even make it over there to that symptomatic state. And they start to come back over into a more coherent state. Right. And that's the stuff that we never see. But but we know based on the science, you know, that 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 happens. That's beautiful. Well, listen, we've, we've, uh, thank you, man. Thank you. I, I just want to tell our audience that, um, um, cause I mentioned at the beginning when I did your intro that, that Dr. Ian is going to be at the college at Life West here every quarter. I, I've implemented this maybe two years ago, I think. Uh, every quarter I bring in somebody, uh, to do our Friday seminar, speak to our whole student body, and then also do a seminar for just for our students. And it's, uh, two hours on Friday evening and then six hours on Saturday 
hands-on uh, work and bringing people in from you know the field who are experts at what they do, teachers at what they do, and uh, and we're really excited, Ian, to have you on October twentieth and twenty first to to come and they they donate their time and 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 to be able to do this and it's just a beautiful thing to be able to shape our students and and be able to have that happen. So thank you um, for that and thanks for joining us today. It was a, really a blast having you and just kind of talking. So. Thanks. Thank you both so much for having me. And I can't wait to be uh, out at uh, in the Bay Area again soon. Yeah. Yeah. Our students are going to love you. They are. They are. And uh, and and I think everyone's going to love you. People who watch this this podcast and webcast, listen to the podcast or the webcast are going to love this because it's great. And to our viewers, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for constantly uh, uh, sending notes of appreciation and, and everything else that happens. I mean, I have to tell you that uh, we've been doing these for close to three years now uh, we probably got over I don't know how many 300 and po- you know total webcasts that we've done and um they just keep getting better and they keep getting deeper and maybe Mary maybe me and you are evolving in this light where I believe we are in this you know in this forum but it's just incredible. But without you, we don't have to really do this because it's really about bringing information, bringing these phenomenal doctors like Dr. Ian, uh, who's sitting in West Palm Beach to somebody who's in Alaska or Europe or somewhere else that you can actually hear the great things that are happening. And, and, and it's just incredible. So there was a bunch of pearls of wisdom that were dropped. I would replay this a few times to be able to pull those out because these goes very the, the, these webcasts go very quickly. I did mention these are now podcasts, so you can be able to uh, go on to Spotify or different areas that we're on, and I think it's all in, in the uh, wherever you got saw this saw this uh, webcast. It's right there to be able to jump on that, listen to them in your car. Um, but it, we thank you and thank you for spreading these. There are people out there that need to hear what Dr. Ian talked about. They need to hear more about you know, pediatric and pregnancy and chiropractic. So keep spreading these, keep sharing these. Most of all, keep spreading the love, uh, taking care of your people from a place of abundance. And uh, just remember that that we are much more powerful than we were ever led to believe. And the same thing with the people that you serve. If we can get that message to them and let them know that within them, there's a power that's much bigger than they were ever taught Um yeah, or even taught existed, we are going to change the course of their life. And hopefully, Dr. Ian, change the trajectory of humanity, because that's really what I see you about. So thank you again, uh, Mary. Thank you. And to everybody else, thank you. Uh, we'll come back at you again next week with a life leadership line. And we drop these leader, these Life by Life Wests every other week. And the Life West leadership line comes out the opposite weeks. Until then, take care. Love you. Appreciate you. And keep doing what you're doing. Bye-bye. 